It's Madden NFL 24. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Bengals and the Niners. All that and more coming up next. Well, the onset of fall weather, certainly a welcome occurrence for folks in Silicon Valley. And we've got football on a gorgeous day here in Santa Clara as we are situated at Levi Stadium. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the San Francisco 49ers. With Charles Davis to my left, I'm Brandon Gordon. And CD, it's a good time to be a 49er fan. The roster is loaded. You got stars on both sides of the ball. The time seems like it's now. Aside from health, what needs to happen for the Niners to make a Super Bowl run? Well, if you're a team trying to play them, you're always trying to figure out how do I slow down an offense that seems to morph and change from week to week and attack defense's weaknesses. And then on the other side, how are you going to block those pass rushers? How are you going to block those guys who get after the quarterback on every snap? Good luck. This is a loaded 49ers team. Meanwhile, for the visiting Bengals, it's a team that's been to the Super Bowl three times in their history, has never won it, but there's just a sense that this could be the year and you don't disagree. I certainly do not because go back two seasons ago, many thought it was a fluke that they got to the Super Bowl. Well, they came back the next year and they got to the AFC Championship game and were extremely disappointed they didn't get back to the Super Bowl. The pieces are in place, the confidence is high. They were Super Bowl opponents twice in the 80s and they're back at it here. The Bengals and Niners are underway. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. The Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. Burrow may be young in his career, but he's helming the Bengals to one of the best stretches they've ever seen. 12 wins last year, which matched the team record, and they made a conference championship game in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time ever. At the center of it all is the man they call Joey B. 35 touchdown passes last year and almost 4,500 yards. He's got a man complete. Down to the 10. Touchdown, Bengals. Jamar Chase, 76 yards. And the Bengals get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. One play in the end zone on a long touchdown pass. You knew they wanted to get him involved. He's their go-to guy. First play, though, wow. Yeah, and I remember when I was playing, something similar happened. I remember getting to the sideline, and my coach said, so what in the scouting report with circling him, putting a star by him, did you not What'd get you miss? <laughs> that he was a good player? And that's the question I would have for them now. You know, as you said, he's a go-to guy. How is he not covered? No, I should say, covered well. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. And the Niners offense set to go to work, and it's last year's revelation, Brock Purdy, who leads him out in season number two from Iowa State. And the tendency for most of these guys is to want to match things right away because they have a lot of confidence in their talent too. They just saw a big strike against their team and you know they're thinking to themselves, I can get this back right now on one play. Well, if it's there, you take it. But otherwise, just go ahead and calm your team down. Run the offense, get things going, and see how things settle in. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll bring up second down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up.
They'll try and pick it up with Mitchell. Now he's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. An ideal start defensively. They already have the touchdown. Now they get the stop. Just like they drew it up on the chalkboard. Does that sound dated? Right? Am I, am I out of touch a little bit? <laughs> it's all right. All right, grease board, heck, computer, exactly what you want, though. Score on your first drive, stop them on the first drive defensively. On fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to punt the football. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signal for and take it. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. It'll be Joe Mixon, born in nearby Oakley, California. Oh, he shifts past him. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. And we got a pause following the play because it appears a member of the Bengals in some discomfort. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now it's Burrow. Looking for Chase on the out route. He's got him. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 18 more yards there and another first down. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive. and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one, they were just unable to complete the pass. Second and 10 now, Burrow. He's got Smith here. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. to the 23 here on third. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Now he's flushed out left. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And Burrow going to slide to the ground as he does pick up the first down. A big gain of 28 as the drive continues. Ah, oh, Brandon, that's a gamer move right there. Facing third down, steps up, calls his own number, and nearly makes the house call. If I'm the coach, I let him take another one right here, give him a chance to be the first one to hit the end zone after that effort he just gave him. Mixon will take this one in. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two, two touchdowns. Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into our lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they've played awfully well in this one. Both sides playing at optimum level. And McPherson on for the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So the drive there took six plays, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon.
After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. They find themselves in a good size hole here and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. They'll start with a run by Mitchell. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. So from the 36 now, first and 10. But once again, it's Mitchell. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? A second down throw for Purdy. That's complete to the tight end, Werner. So the completion gets him just a yard. And now it's third and three. Purdy now to throw. That's Samuel caught left side. And he is going to have a 49ers first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. This offense is starting to get into rhythm. A nice quick throw there on target. Able to pick up another first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Purdy. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Jennings. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. On oh, the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Purdy looking to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and the Bengals grab it. And the 43 so down inside the 45 to the 43 yard line that's where they'll take over the pocket collapsed around him I know we talk about it a lot but a QB has to have that sixth sense doesn't he he really does and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame and anytime he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw caught by Higgins. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. This second and four. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And his throw here is incomplete. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not before that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. 
Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown! Jamar Chase on the touchdown throw for Joe Burrow. And the Bengals have moved out in front by three touchdowns. Boy, still in the first quarter, and look out. I mean, they are on pace for over 80 points in this game. I don't know that they'll get there, CD, but this has been impressive to watch so far. That certainly would be history in the making, wouldn't it, partner? I'm glad we're here to actually watch and see if it actually happens, although, like you, I have my doubts, but they are firmly in control of this game. Extra point by McPherson, up and good, and it's now 21 to nothing. So how about this for a start? 21 nothing here in the first as they kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 16. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This will be caught at Samuel. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 19 yards that time for number 19. Well, these guys certainly need something good to go their way because this first quarter has been something of a disaster for them trying to move the ball. But that completion there maybe can get them focused and moving in the right direction. There's Purdy on first and 10. Over the middle complete. That's Jennings. It'll be a gain of five, and that will bring up second down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Ball at the 40 here for second and five. This is Samuel. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. The Niners have the first down on a gain of 11. Up the middle, here's Mitchell. Some extra space following the display of power. Down just inside the 45. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 25-yard line. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. This is going to be a corner route to their tight end, and I'll tell you what, it's man coverage, so that makes it hard for a linebacker to stay with him. And he's able to make the catch on the right side of the field and pick up the first down. Not first down, Purdy. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. They sack him back at the 33-yard line. Trey Hendrickson showing off his pass rush repertoire that time. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They are not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting... And the ball is knocked out, and the Bengals grab it. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back -back drives, fumbles on their last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? When they stop fumbling? <laughs> <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film, and only if they manage to win the game. Jamar Chase hoping to be at center stage yet again as the offense returns to the field. Making his presence felt early in this one. First half, already over the century mark. How about the yards per completion, too? That's a pretty darn good number there. 
number of catches, but his shredding defense is getting big yardage with each and every one of them. Vanderbilt's own Oren Burks had the tackle defensively. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. Be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Come on, dog! And that'll be a free five yards for the offense. Just like a tennis match, that's just an unforced error. Stay alert, don't jump early, and give them free yardage. They go play action with Burrow. Throw right side, pulled in by Higgins. And Higgins is going to have a Bengals first down as he'll be brought down just shy of midfield. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he'll manage to pick up about four in second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Over the middle to Smith. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. 21-0, our score after one. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Burrow will throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down, and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. Well, they have certainly gotten him involved in this first half, and on third down, they looked his way again. And what a delight for his quarterback to find him and keep the drive moving. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. A gain of two brings up second and eight. From the 34-yard line, here's a second and eight. Now Burrow. He stiff arms him. Short throw to Smith. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers' 20-yard line. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. We can see offensive pass interference called on this play from time to time. The tight end's going to sell that he's going outside. Let the slot receiver come past and then work himself back to the inside. Sure enough, he's left with some open space and he picks up the first down. From the red zone now, here's Burrow first down. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back at the 24. Javon Hargrave, the D-tackle, getting the sack. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving him up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Here's Burrow. And this is incomplete. Oh, that looked like a sure six points, but he could not get that to stick, and that is a golden opportunity wasted there. And that is not what you expect from a receiver of his caliber. Sometimes you get a little ahead of yourself, you don't look it in, and all of a sudden it's on the ground. A surprise to all. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That is caught. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Everything's going right here in this first half, and they've got a good lead. And part of that can be attributed to their success on third downs. 
This is another conversion here. And they can look to really open things up now with this first and goal. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. They'll run here with Hubbard. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. Only four yards on that game, but, you know, a lot of people would say that's like getting nine in normal circumstances since this was first and five. Yeah, now your playbook's wide open here, second and very short. Yeah, I still don't think that you can count it in the stats that way at contract time. No, no, it still goes down as four, not okay. nine. <laughs> And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them. But they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. A chance to really put this game out of reach. Here's third and goal. Here's Hubbard. And he is in. Touchdown, Bengals. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Bengals are able to add on to their first half lead. Well, you talk about a team coming into an opposing stadium and just taking the life right out of a crowd. That's what we're witnessing here. 27 nothing, Charles. And this defense, they've just looked completely unprepared for what's been thrown at them. And you know they're supposed to adjust series to series. That has not happened for them. So I don't think halftime adjustments are going to help a heck of a lot. They are in major trouble unless they figure out something really fast. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the route is on here in this first half. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily when you look at your plays, oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Another run with Mitchell. And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. And that's the type of play that'll fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. They work now on second and nine. Back to throw, Purdy. Complete to the tight end, Kittle, over the middle of the field. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Here now, third and a yard. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence, haven't allowed a point yet, flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. On second down, here's Mitchell. 
Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. It's a gain of four. Brings up third and six. Throwing here, Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. Now on first down, it's Purdy. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 19 yards there on the catch and run. And I don't think there's any question that this offense is going to need to hit on a few more plays like this. It's been a difficult first half for them, to say the least. And I do believe if they want to get back in this game, they need to start right now. It's kind of like making adjustments. If you try and wait until the half, it's probably too late. They need to get going right here. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Well, no one likes to see that drop, but I'll guarantee it's not going to stop his quarterback from going back to him any time he has open space. Here's second and ten. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Well, this drive, they're a perfect two of two on third down conversions, but they need a full 10 yards here. Purdy now to throw. And he holds it in. Jennings from 17 yards out and the Niners get a bit closer I'm not sure that they have illusions right now of okay we're going to score eight times in a row and we're going to be terrific but to get one that was huge for them that has to feel much better right now and you do have we're still in the first half you do have the entire second half there's something about that goose egg that just looked bad on that board but now they've broken it yeah broken through can they maintain the pace we'll see as we go along Moody good with the extra point. And it's now a 28-7 ball game. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Well, everything right now that they touch on this side of the football, it seems to turn to gold. They've scored on three straight possessions. That lead continues to grow. And, I mean, if they can get points here, Charles, might almost be an insurmountable comeback for the other side. I think you make a great case for that, so I'm going to flip it over to the other side. Could they make the big comeback? Certainly. Am I expecting it? Not at all. I think if we don't see a drastic change in how they're playing, this blowout's going to get bigger and bigger before the final gun. On second down, here's Mixon. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. Dropped down at the 23-yard line. A gain of four. And this is third down. And the Bengals on third down. No problems to this point. A perfect five for five. This is third and eight. Burrow looking to pass. He's got his target. That's complete. Down the right sideline. And he'll finally be taken down at the two-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Oh, big-time credit. What a play design there. 
They wanted to get him loose in the open field, and they succeeded. He had all sorts of room to operate in, and they finally track him down inside the five-yard line. After the big play, a chance to finish now on first and goal. Burrow on play action, fighting through pressure. And he's going to go down. This will count as a sack, a very short sack, taken down at the two. And Nick Bosa so quick on the outside, he gets in there to bring him down. That I'm struggling to understand a little bit. That close to the goal line, first down, run the football. If you want to throw it, throw some play action on second down. Mixon trying to punch it in. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. Joe Mixon with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bengals are able to widen their advantage. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends are on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the route is on here in this first half. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up and they're still down double digits. So you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. When you're struggling on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. First down, here's Mitchell. And it's a fumble, and the Bengals grab it, and they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. Do you remember in preseason, we were going to the different training camps and visiting teams, and we always would see the running backs working out and going through those gauntlet drills, yep. and you know, guys either slapping at the ball or the machines. You gotta learn to take care of it. Yeah, they lost it there, big fumble. Joe Mixon in the Bengal offense, ready to go back to work. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter, been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down and that will not be ruled a fumble. Purdy now on second down. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Call it a gain of three on the play. And now third down and six to go. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you've got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. 
So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Cincinnati set to take over once again. They've had a very solid first half, and as we near the end of that first half, they're just looking for a little more on top of their lead right now. And when you put together a game plan on offense, you put together what you think is going to be the best possible scenario, right? Hey, we're going to score. These are the plays that are going to do it. But you also put together your counters, meaning after they make adjustments to what you're doing, what do we have to go to next? The adjustment to the adjustment. Exactly. So I can't wait to see if we come out of the half how they're going to go about doing things. Do you just keep running what you ran before, or do you go to your counters expecting those adjustments to happen? Before that, we'll see the end here of this first half. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Now it's Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. And Boyd going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this up to midfield. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Joe Mixon who had it working in the first half. He had a nose for the end zone as he wound up with two touchdowns on the ground in those first two quarters. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The 49ers going to have the football and trailing on the scoreboard as we get back underway on EA Sports. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The 49er offense set to go to begin quarter number three. A CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history. That's try to come back from a four-possession deficit. And, partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. And let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl, a 25-point lead late, that wasn't enough to put someone away. But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. And they get 17 more on that one and another first down. Those are the type of runs that we did not see from him in the first half, but a good start to the third quarter. And I know what everyone's thinking that's watching this. They did a great job adjusting at the half. Oftentimes, you don't make adjustments. You just dial into your game plan a little bit better, and maybe they're starting to make some headway. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Shotgun now with Purdy. 
And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Purdy with it on third and long. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Anytime a ball is thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to kick it away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Roughing the kicker here. Defense. And that hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, usually bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. George Kittle, the receiver that he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Purdy sets up to throw again. That's caught out right by Jennings. Five yards, now it's third and five. Purdy. Flush to his right. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. It certainly appears that he's been able to get a read on how they've wanted to contain him in this game. He's seen some places where he can beat them in big spots. And right there, he slides in with ease for the first down. Purdy bootlegging it. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Here's Purdy. This pass to Jennings, and he makes a catch. Just a gain of a couple there. And now we've got a third and three. It's a gain of two. Brings up third and three. Now Purdy. That's caught by Debo Samuel. Touchdown, San Francisco. It's a six-yard touchdown pass, and the 49ers are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, Bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that.
So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. Taking it about the one. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So here are the Bengals now as they get their first possession of this second half. And they were terrific in the first half, built up a sizable lead, and it's just been cut into a bit following the opening drive score on the other side. But this is a unit that has to be itching to get the football again. You could say that again. They've got to be pretty eager because, let's face it, they've had to sit through halftime and sit on the sidelines and watch that drive. So you can bet that they're saying, let's get on with this. we got to go out there and get some more points. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. Mixon with a first down carry. And a pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. 59 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. A solid pickup there by Mixon, and when he's running it this way, the Cincinnati offense takes on an extra dimension. They love to run the football and shut people down with Mixon carrying the load. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. They'll stay on the ground, Mixon again. Oh, able to avoid him. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What is it, three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. Jet sweep, Boyd with it. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. It was Cleland Furl who was able to rush in and make that tackle. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Eight yards on the pickup. And this is third down. Here is third down and four. Now Burrow. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I would describe the way that he's played today as mature. He's already moved on mentally from that incompletion, and he's more than ready to throw his next pass downfield. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. And this one, a 41-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So this drive maybe didn't end with the same kind of success they had in the first half, but they do add three to their lead. And defensively, I think they went in there at halftime and made a pact with each other and said, look, we can't let these guys keep driving it right down our throats. Not perfect giving up three, but a much better start than the way they played in the first half. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Debo Samuel and the 49ers back in possession here. Sort of a slow and steady game so far, but reliable for him here in this third quarter. Sounds like we're describing a possession receiver, right? The one that finds a way to make the big catches, the ones that break the backs of defenses, keep first downs accumulating. I think he's that and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, he's been pretty good so far. We'll see if he can make this good game a great game. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Purdy looking to throw. And his throw is incomplete. 
Jennings was the one he was looking for, but now it'll be third down. Now, right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. The same target, same result. It's Kittle. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way. Work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner? Safety? Linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. On second down, McCaffrey. They got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Another modest gain there on that one, and I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, and they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner, because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They'll have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. And this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on here to punt it away. And there's a work of art right there. Out of bounds at the two-yard line. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. He is hoping to find the end zone for a third time, and we sit now in the third quarter. And nothing would excite him more, but I think even more so, his offensive line. Anytime you've got a guy scoring that many times, that means you've done a really nice job in front of him. You're always giving props to the big fellas up front. It's always a good idea. Those are some massive men. And while they hope to continue this drive, it's really already mission accomplished. They've given enough space now that if they have to pump the ball, they've done so with that first run. They're passing here, Joe Burrow. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Burrow will throw. And he's going to go down. He backed up into the end zone, and this is going to wind up a safety. At this point, I think it's a surprise when he isn't close to being sacked on a passing down. The amount of times he's hit the deck today, I think a lot of us are reading safety before they even took the snap. Simply a merciless pass rush every step of the game, and that rush earns a crowning achievement there. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. McLeod to return it. And San Francisco gets set to go here. The defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Now on first down, it's Purdy. And he will find his man, Samuel. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A well-executed 22-yard gain. 
Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they've put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Birdie off the play fake. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. He had no options downfield there and just chucked it out of bounds. There was no one open. He was in the pocket. Where was the intentional grounding call? Oh, you wanted the flag. Of course I did. I'm a defensive guy. You know that. Where was the flag? The officials point out that someone was in the area. He got away with one. Purdy will look to throw again here. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's not the first time they've looked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hook up again on third down to keep this drive alive. So from the 36 now, first and 10. A handoff left, McCaffrey fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Trey Hendrickson, the one who gets him on the ground. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Purdy now to throw. That is caught. He's got room to roam. And down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. With the score where it is, this was probably going to be four down territory if they didn't convert there. But what a nice job of working his way open, making sure he secured the catch, and setting up first and goal. They'll try to run with McCaffrey. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there, but that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Again, McCaffrey. And across the goal line into the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Christian McCaffrey, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Niners have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Boy, we talk a lot about Christian McCaffrey and what he can do in the open field, and it's easy to gloss over how tough he can be to stop near the goal line. And he shows you just how tough he is on that carry as he takes it into the end zone. Purdy will throw for it. And now the pressure gets there, and he goes down. So he couldn't get rid of the football, and that deficit stays right where it is.
So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. And this offense on third down today, they've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and four. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. First down, here's Burrow. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. Well, the secondary's really struggled today, but that's a little bit of a measure of revenge, isn't it? And they just followed the basic rules. See ball, knock ball away, turns into a nice play. Second and 10 now, Burrow. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. On third down, Burrow. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder. You think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him. And I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. He's going to drop this down to McCaffrey. He'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Open man is Samuel, complete. And on the 42-yard line here and brought down there. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. They go play action here, Purdy. And incomplete on the deep ball. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Purdy sets up to throw again. shot in there it's out of bounds incomplete 
So the pass goes out of bounds, but he was not outside of the tackle box when he threw that. He's got to be careful. You and I both know if it's even close, they're going to give it to the quarterback. They don't want to throw that flag unnecessarily. So if you're just in the area, you're going to be okay. Purdy with it on third and long. Winds up and lets it go for Samuel. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. The scoreboard tells the story for him a little bit bleak, and while it's not quite desperation time yet, it's definitely getting close, but the defense reads the scoreboard as well. They're going to back up and make them really earn it. Purdy, big fourth down play. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds incomplete. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call. But how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? All right, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. So eight yards on the completion there, and that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. This offensive line starting to win up front. You win that battle in the trenches, you can kind of wear them down here late. So you bring in the second part to that equation, and that's the big running back, the big bruiser, who can get more than what's blocked and break a few extra tackles and gain yardage. And somehow he's going to get a yard out of this as he fought through that first contact. It's second down. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. From the 31, here's a second down and nine. Again, it's Mixon. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. I have zero rooting interest in either team in this game. I only want a good game. But with all the offense we've seen from them tonight, it's kind of nice to see the defense step up and make a big play. Yeah, I was wondering if they were ever going to get him in the backfield. Nice to see him get a stop. He's got his target. That's complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Now it's Burrow. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Once you get into the red zone, space is at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Now it's Burrow. And he'll spot Higgins open left side. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. Now Burrow. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Jamar Chase on the touchdown throw from Joe Burrow. And the Bengals have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. And this is obviously quite a performance. And most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back, 
I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football. In this case, it's a guy out wide catching it, and he's done exactly that, truly leading his team right now towards victory. Three touchdown catches. He's been the headliner. McPherson on for the point after. And that PAT pushes the lead up to 23 now. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And bulldozing his way through. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. We said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. And they're going to speed things up here. On first down, Purdy. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Purdy looking to throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Shotgun now with Purdy. Being chased out left. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play, and he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it, and he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And that will force a turnover on downs. Well, being just short of midfield, they decide to take a crack at it on fourth down. They don't come through. Sometimes it's just showing confidence in your defense. You know that they're good, and they'll take care of you. A lot of coaches during the week will announce to their team, we're going to be aggressive, guys. We're going to go for it. And hey, defense, you got me? <laughs> A little bit of a challenge to them to see if they'll pick up the rest of the team. We'll see how they respond now. Javon Hargrave, the former Eagle, there on the stop. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. That's not good enough, man. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you've got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. Back to Mixon on second down. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They outleveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield, and held them to no gain. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. 
They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Throwing the out route, finding Boyd for the completion. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. They didn't need much. They didn't get much, but what they did get was enough for a first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Mixing up the middle. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Trey Greenlaw in there on the tackle. This defense, tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get them for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. Back to Mixon on second down. Five yards, now it's third and five. So this one in the win column now for the season. 